Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for allowing me to give this talk. So yeah, this is a joint work with Maramila Caballero and Adrián González. And well, basically the idea that we wanted to do uh, with this uh, work is try to construct uh, seedback models using continuous state branching process. So originally, uh, for example, consider a population in which we have two types, which are competing between themselves in the population. And, uh, and the dynamics of each of the types is given by a continuous state branching process with immigration. So basically, uh, one question, for example, is to describe the genealogy in the case that the two types have the same distribution. So in this case, it's given by lambda coalescence, and way way of proving this is by means of moment duality. So practically proving moment duality with a frequency process associated to one of the types in the population. But actually, this is a really challenging problem when working with continuous state branching process to construct a frequency process which is autonomous, which is Markovian, because the size of the population of a continuous state branching process is always fluctuating. So in order to do this, we develop a technique which we call the cooling technique, which allows to construct a frequency process under the assumption that the total size of the population is constant. So with this technique, we wanted to work now with the structured populations. So we have two islands in which each island had two different types of individuals, and we wanted to construct this frequency process. And once we have this frequency process, uh, we start uh, proving certain properties of the population. For example, uh, have some notion of the ancestry uh, for this type of structured populations by means of moment duality, and additionally to study the dynamics of the population. And in order to do this, what we will be assuming is to consider a large population limit in order to simplify the model and obtain a deterministic limit. And then by a stability analysis of the equilibrium, Found, uh, find a uh, large uh, range of parameters in which we find coexistence of the two types in the population. Okay, so uh, the model is the, is the following. So we will consider a population consisting of two types of individuals, uh, namely it will be type X and type Y individuals, which will be distributed among two islands. And then uh, each island can be understood as representing different kinds of individuals. For example, in seedback models, we can consider uh, active or dormant individuals. And the only restriction that we're going to have is that individuals can only give birth to other individuals or offspring of the same time, but they can be located in any of the two different islands. Additionally, we will assume that we have immigration events which contribute to the total size of the population of any type and any uh, island. So for example, here I have type X individuals and type Y individuals in each of the islands. And type X individuals can only give, give birth to type X individuals, but they can be located in any of the two islands and the same for type Y individuals. And additionally, we have these immigration events coming to each of the islands or any of the types. So formally, which will be the model? Well, basically we will assuming that individuals of type X, the dynamics of the population will be given by a multi-type failure diffusion with immigration, which is the unique solution to this uh, stochastic differential equation. And about the parameters, we will assume that CX and BX will be two dimensional vectors with non-negative entries and BX will be simply a two times matrix, which of diagonal and which are not negative entries. And therefore, this will be the dynamics. And I, I also want to mention that one can make the construction for a general multi-type continuous state branching pr process with immigration. So additionally, we can consider all the jump part of the, of the branching process. But to keep things simple in the talk, I will only be working with the continuous case and with this multi-type failure diffusion. And of course, uh, W will be simply a two-dimensional branching notion. So let me give some interpretation about the parameters. Okay, so Xi is simply describing the total mass of the population of individuals of type X at island I. And the parameters, for example, BII of X is simply representing the rate at which individuals of type X residing at island I give birth to individuals of the same type located at island I. And the variance associated to these branching events will be simply denoted by CI of X. And additionally, we'll have cross branching between the islands. So for i and j between one and two, with i different from j, this parameter, the ij of x, is describing the rate at which individuals of type x residing at island j 
give birth to individuals of the same type, but located at island I. And fina finally, the parameter B I of X, beta I of X, is simply giving us the rate at which individuals arrive to the population of type X and at island I. And for type Y individuals, we'll have exactly the same dynamics. So basically, the total mass is given again by a multi-type failure diffusion with immigration, which is simply the unique strong solution to this stochastic differential equation. And W uh, Y will be a two-dimensional Brannion motion, which will be independent of the one uh, describing uh, the individuals of type X. And additionally, again, CX and beta CY and beta Y will be two-dimensional vectors with non-negative entries. And BY will be a two times two matrix with up diagonal non-negative entries. And of course, YI is simply giving the total mass of the individuals of the, or of the population of type Y individuals located at island I. Okay, so these are the dynamics of each of the populations of each type and of each island. So what we wanted to do is to study the frequency of one of the types in the population. So in order to do this, we have to construct the frequency process. So we will be uh, describing the relative frequency of type X individuals in the population in each of the islands. So we construct the process, which I denote simply by Ri of t, which will be simply giving us the relative frequency of type X individuals at island I, which is simply the basic definition, which is the total mass of type X individuals at island I, divided by the total size of the population at island I. In order to uh, complete the description of the dynamics, we will also consider the process CI of T, which is giving us the total size of the population at island I, giving, of course, by the sum of the total population of type X individuals and type Y individuals located at island I. Okay, so the process that we actually want to study is the frequency process, which is the process given by R1 and R2, frequency of type X individuals located at island I and island two. The problem is that if we consider this process by itself, it's not Markovian, because we know that the original process X and Y, given that they are independent and uh, multi-type failure diffusions are Markovian. But in order to reconstruct X and Y from the frequency process, we need additional information. And this additional information is given by the total size of the population in each of the areas. So by itself, it's not Markovian. So basically, it's quite difficult to study. So therefore, we have to come to up with an idea in order to construct the frequency process, which is Markovian. So what we do is take this idea, which is uh, sometimes used in population biology, that is trying to construct the frequency process, but under the assumption that the total size of the population is constant in each of the islands. So in the one dimensional case, there are many ways of doing this, for example, conditioning, one can use time changes, but the thing is that these techniques do not work in general. So we developed this new technique, which we call the cooling technique in order to construct such a process. But in order to implement this technique, we'll be, um, we need to consider the, the whole process given by the frequency and the total size of the population, which is Markovian, and describe its uh, dynamics by means of a solution to a Martingale problem. Okay, so let me give uh, a simple remark of the techniques that can be used. And for example, one can think about time changes. So let's just assume that the drift terms associated to branching are equal to zero, and that the process X and Y, uh, the original multi-type failure diffusions, uh, have the same distribution. So in this case, uh, the model is quite simple. It's simply the solution to this uh, stochastic differential equation, and where W, X and Y are simply independent two-dimensional Brannion motions. So re let's re recall the definition. The frequency process is given as follows, as well as the total size of the population in each of the islands. So one can consider uh, in the two-dimensional case, uh, uh, multi-parameter time changes. So for example, we can consider this functional tau, uh, tau one of T and tau two of T, which are simply giving as these integrals of the reciprocals of the total size of the population in each of the islands. So with these functionals, then we can make this multi-parameter time change. So if we consider the frequency process and we time change it by the inverse of these uh, functionals of the total size of the population in each of the islands, 
The resulting process, which I denote by B, will be Markovian, an autonomous frequency process, and is the solution to this stochastic differential equation. So basically we have this right fissure deviation term, and then we have these mutation terms. So basically um, with these time change techniques, we can construct um, an autonomous frequency process, which is Markovian, and everything is nice. The thing is that uh, even though uh, we can uh, simplify the assumption that they have the same distribution and apply the time changes, in our case, when bx and by are different from zero, then the time change technique does not hold. And even so, if one consider the more general case in where we're working with multi-type continuous state branching process with immigration, also the time change technique only works in the self-similar class. So outside of self-similar process, uh, then this technique does not hold. So in order to construct the frequency process, then we will be uh, using what we call the cooling technique. So what is the cooling technique? The cooling technique is simply a sampling technique in which we have discrete times. And we let the original uh, process given by the frequency and the total size of the population evolve in time. And then at each of these discrete sampling times, we look at the process and we take the information of the frequency process, but at the same time, we push the total size of the population back to a constant level. And by doing this iteration at each of these sampling times and making the sampling times go to zero, we will obtain the process we are interested in, which is the frequency process under the assumption that the total size of the population is constant. So uh, more formally, we will consider fixed population sizes, which I denote by Z1 and Z2 uh, for the first and the second islands. And I will consider for this level, which is the level that we want the population size to be, and consider this sequence of jump Markov processes, which I call the cooling processes. And how they are described? Well, if I fix n, then the jump times of the cooling process are given by this sequence of random variables, which are simply independent exponential random variables of rate n. So this is a really simple process. We only need to know the jump times and the distribution of the jump. So to describe the distribution of the jump, I will be using these kernels that you know by kappa, which is simply the probability that at each jump, the cooling process lies in any set. And this is given in terms of the original process. So as we can see, we only take the information of the frequency process. And for the moment, we do not care where the total size of the population is. So the simplicity of this process is given by the infinitesimal generator, which is quite easy because it's a jump Markov process. And this, of course, will be a failure process also, which is quite important. Okay, so intuitively what we're doing. So we fix, uh, we fix an N and in order to define the cooling process, we, on, we need only to define it at each of the jump times. So in order to define the cooling process at the first cooling time, what we do, we, we, do, we consider the original process. It started from the initial position R and the initial position for the total size of the population will be given by this level Z1 and Z2. And then we let the process evolve onto time one over N. And at time one over N, we take the information of the frequency process and we push the total size of the population back to the level Z1 and Z2 in each of the islands. So using that the, cool, that the original process is a Markov process, we can restart our original process from this new random position given by the position that we saw the frequency process. And because we push the total size of the population back to these constant levels at the initial position C1 and C2 for the total size of the population. And let, then we let it evolve onto time one over N in order to define the cooling process at the next cooling time. So by continuing this procedure, we can define the cooling process for any uh, positive time. So what's happening really with this construction? Well, basically that the cooling process behaves like that the first two coordinates of our original process, which is the frequency process, the process we are interested in, but the fluctuations of the total size of the population around this fixed level C1 and C2 are becoming smaller and smaller as n goes to infinity as the sampling or the cooling times go to zero. So in the limit, we expect to obtain the frequency process but under the assumption that the total size of the population is constant. And this type of techniques resemble what is done in the laboratory, for example, in experimental evolution, for example, in the Lenke experiment with E. coli or the DSA experiment with GIST. 
So uh, what happens? Well, basically, well, here I have a really bad construction, but what we do is, for example, if we only take into account the total size of the population, then we fix a level for each of the islands. We let it evolve, and at each of the sampling times, we push the total size of the population back to the level Z. And we define simply uh, for each of the islands the cooling process at the first sampling time simply as our original process, but the time one over it. So one of the main results tell us that for any fixed level, Z1 and Z2 in zero infinity square, and any time horizon T, which is positive, we have the convergence of the sequence of cooling process as n goes to infinity weekly in the Stockholm space of zero T and zero one square. And this is the process that we are actually interested in which is uh, this frequency process under constant population size assumption. So how can we characterize this process? Well, this process is what we call the asymmetric um, two island frequency process. So for any fixed level, which is now a parameter, which is giving us the constant, the constant population size and any initial condition R1 and R2 in zero one square, then we have that the frequency uh, process is simply the solution to this stochastic differential equation, which is quite simple. So basically we have this term for, uh, for the martingale parts. And as we will see later, when we see duality, we'll see that this can be decomposed in a white Fisher diffusion term. And we will have another term which is related to efficiency, uh, meaning that we have individuals with each different amount of resources in order to reproduce. And what about uh, the drift term? Well, the drift term takes the following form. So we have uh, these two classical selection terms. So one coming from the difference from the Malthusians because we are considering a symmetry in the dynamics of each of the types. And additionally, we have a selection coming from the variance, which is what we call the Gillespie selection term. And we have this mixed, um, mixed terms coming from the cross branching between the, between the islands. And it can be decomposed as we'll see later on in a migration term and an additionally mixed selection term. And also we have the mutation terms coming from the immigration of each of the types, type X and type Y. And of course, um, these are simply given by uh, a two dimensional Brownian motion. And of course, in the more general case that we're working with the general continuous state branching process with immigration, uh, the frequency process becomes a little bit more complicated we, because we have to consider the jumps. So we have addition of martingale terms coming from the jump parts of the continuous state branching process. And additionally, we have uh, additional terms coming from the jumps in the drift terms. But for simplicity, I just leave the case, uh, uh, the continuous case. And as we can see, there are many evolutionary forces which are coming into play in this model. Okay, so really the, the frequency process is well-defined. So there's a unique solution to that stochastic differential equation which lies in the interval zero one uh, square for all t almost surely, which means that it's actually a frequency process. We have the following estimate in the initial conditions, which is quite helpful in order to prove that, of course, the frequency process is a Feller process and we des describe its dynamics by means of the infinitesimal generator, which is giving as follows. So basically here we also can see all the evolutionary forces that come into play in, in the model, which originally it's a really simple model. And also it's quite helpful in order to prove uh, moment duality. So now let's make, uh, let me make a remark about the model and the asymmetry, which is quite important for, for what we are considering. So imagine that in the particular case in which the multi-type ferro diffusions with immigration, X and Y have the same distribution, then in this case, many of the terms disappear because they are given in terms of the differences of the parameters. And we are left with the solution to this uh, stochastic differential equation. And we recover the usual uh, two-dimensional island, uh, the two general uh, island model. But what happens is that if we define this function here, dependent of R1 and R2, which is giving as follows, then when they have the same distribution, this function in the frequency process disappears. So uh, when we are not considering a symmetry in the two different types in the population, then we lose uh, the classical selection terms from the Malthusians and from the variance, and we also lose these mixed selection terms, which are quite interesting because in the dual gives us uh, branching, uh, cross branching between the different islands. 
But I want to say a little remark about this um, return, which is the frequency coming from the differences from the variance in the model. So this uh, goes back of the discussion given by Gillespie, in which Gillespie was really interested in the asymmetry coming from the difference from the variance, which um, aside from the, from the models that were used in, in his time. And he made a quite uh, nice argument in which he said, imagine that we have two individuals which have the same Malthusians, so they give birth to the same mean number of offspring, but they have different reproductive strategies, which means, for example, that imagine that one of the individuals put all the eggs in the same nest and the other individual, which is a little bit more clever, puts the eggs in different nests. So by putting the eggs in different nests, what this individual is doing is minimizing the risk and therefore the variance associated to his reproductive strategy. So we expect that the individual, uh, which is putting the eggs in different nests, is, has actually a selective advantage. And this is actually what we're seeing. So imagine that X type individuals has less variance than Y type of individuals. So this term becomes positive, pushing the frequency process towards one in each of the islands, and therefore showing that in a certain way, X type individuals will have a selective advantage. Okay, so basically this is a construction of the frequency process. Uh, so we can construct this asymmetric to island frequency process coming from multi-type feller diffusions with immigration. So we, we wanted to start analyzing certain properties of, of the population. And one of them is, can we obtain some notion of generalized ancestry for this, for this model? And the answer is yes, and this is given simply by moment duality. So the model is quite simple. So we expect that moment duality holds. And in most cases, it does. And the moment dual will be simply a class of branching coalescent process, which will be given by simply a Markov chain in this uh, continuous time Markov chain in this state space, which will be the natural numbers plus zero, the square, and a sedimentary state. And for any fixed level, Z1 and Z2, just to construct the frequency process, uh, the dual will have the following rates. So we'll have um, a kilon rate coming from the um, immigration rates of type Y individuals. Then we have branching rates. And the branching rates are quite interesting because we have like this classical branching rate coming from the uh, selection terms uh, from the different of the Malthusians and the variances. And then we have this pairwise branching in which two individuals interact, giving birth to an individual in the population, which is coming from the efficiency terms in the Martingale terms of the frequency process. And then we have these new terms, which is like cross branching. So basically what we have here is that an individual at island two reproduces, but the offspring lies in island number one. And the same happens for the second island. Then we have these migration terms, or rates, which is simply one individual, for example, here at island one migrates to the second island. And then we have these uh, rates, the first ones associated to the immigration rates of type X individuals are simply dead rates. So an individual dies in the population. And then we have coalescence. So here we have coalescent terms, which are Kingman type coalescence. Okay, so in the more general case <clears throat> that we're working with continuous state branching process, of course, the moment dual, uh, more forces appear. For example, instead of having only Kingman type coalescence, of course, we'll have lambda coalescence. Instead of having only pairwise branching, we'll have K to pairwise branching, in which K individuals interact to give birth to an offspring in the population. And also, for example, in, instead of having these terms, we'll have coordinated mutation, in which many individuals uh, mutate at the same time. And all these uh, evolutionary forces will come in from the jump terms of the continuous st uh, state branching process with immigration when we construct the frequency process. Okay, so in this case, uh, when we have that all the rates are non-negative for any uh, two states in this state space, then we construct, can construct a Markov change, which I denote simply by N, C of N, which has this rate right here, that is, which is in this state space, and that the infinitesimal generator of the Markov chain is given by the rates I just defined. So when all the rates are non-negative, sorry, is non-negative, and for any states in this state space, then we have that the asymmetric two island frequency process is the moment dual of this Markov chain. 
So the Markov chain and this dynamics that I just described gives us a notion of the generalized ancestry associated to the frequency process. And just trying, I will try now to relate the rates, the, the terms in the asymmetric frequency process and what happens in the moment dual. So in this table, for example, uh, in the case that we're considering the rates of same type and same island, in the asymmetric frequency process, it gives us these selection terms, which in the dual becomes uh, usual branching. The, the variances uh, are quite interesting because it gives different phenomena. So for example, we can decompose the Martingale term in this right fissure term, which gives a uh, Kingman type coalescence. And this term, which is efficiency, which gives us this pairwise branch. And additionally, we have in the drift term, the appearance of this selection term coming from the difference of the variance, which in the moment dual gives us simply branching. And the same happens for the second island. This um, immigration rates in the dual give mutation rates in the two island frequency process. And in the moment dual are simply given by dead rates. The immigration rates of type Y individuals this, this mutation uh, terms in the frequency process and becomes killing rates in the moment dual. And finally, the cross branching rates between the different islands give us two uh, phenomena. The first one is this migration rate in each of the islands. And the second one is this mixed selection term in the asymmetric frequency process. The mixed selection rate gives uh, mixed branching in the islands and the migration simply migration also in the dual. So graphically, for example, I have uh, an example of the frequency process and how it looks in the moment dual. So here I have the evolution of island number one and island number two, and let's consider that time goes in this direction. So for example, this term right here, which is a selection term in the dual, in the, in the, in the frequency process, sorry, in the moment dual, we have branching. So this blue individual gives birth to this offspring in the population, this purple one. This green term, which is the red fissure term, well, gives here coalescence. And then we have this other green term, which in the moment dual becomes pairwise branching. So these two individuals in the population interact, giving birth to this offspring in the population. Then we have this uh, mutation term, which in the dual becomes a killing rate. And then we have this purple uh, term, which becomes a dead rate in the dual. So this uh, individual dies and disappears from the population. And then the, more, the most interesting terms are as follows. So here, this pink rate, which comes from the cross branching rates in the failure diffusion, well, this mixed selection term becomes um, this uh, per, uh, cross branching between the, the islands. So here, this individual reproduces, but the offspring lies in the other island. And basically here we have these migration rates. So this uh, yellow individual migrates to the other island and the same happens with this uh, purple guy, which migrates to the other island. So, well, here basically it's a very uh, basic representation of what's happening with the moment dual and associated to each of the terms in the diffusion of our frequency process. Okay, so finally, what we wanted to do is try to actually obtain the dynamics of the dynamics of the frequency process in each of the islands. But of course, working with the stochastic system was a little bit uh, complicated. So we wanted to make an assumption which simplified the model. And the assumption is, what if we take the size of the population in each of the islands go to infinity? So in this case, because we have a like, law of large numbers type of result, we expect that the stochastic fluctuations will disappear and we will be left with a deterministic process. And indeed, this is the case. So this deterministic process that results under a lar large uh, population limit will be simply given, denoted by R infinity of R, which is the solution to this uh, differential equation where the B tilde term is given simply in terms of the rates of the, of, of the branching rates of the drift terms in the original multi-type filler diffusions. Of course, this is suspected because this is related to the mean and therefore all the martingale terms disappear. So our result is that for any time horizon T, which is positive and any P greater than one, then we have the convergence of the asymmetric frequency process to this deterministic limit uniformly in compact sets of time and in LP. 
So this is a little bit stronger than mean convergence. And this, this result gives us that we can actually approximate on their large size populations, our original frequency process by this deterministic limit. So if, for example, in the one dimensional case, when you're, we're working only one, one island and only one uh, and two continuous state branching process, this um, deterministic limit is simply a logistic equation, which is quite helpful because this gives us a um, notion of the Malthusian when we have a symmetry between the different types that are competing in the population. But we expected that when working with the structured populations, that we have the two different islands, the dynamics between the types in the deterministic limit will be more interesting and gives us some insight of what is happening in the population. Additionally, uh, because we have this convergence of the asymmetric frequency process to this deterministic limit, we wanted to measure uh, the error that we are committing by approximating the original process by its deterministic limit. So we have a fluctuation result. So let's us define A1 and A2, simply these functions, which are given in terms of the deterministic limit. Then the fluctuation result is giving as follows. So uh, the fluctuations of the original frequency process and its deterministic limit is of size square root of set. And the process, which is the difference multiplied by square root of set convergence, to this process as infinity weekly in the space of continuous functions from zero t to r, where s infinity is simply the unique strong solution to this stochastic differential equation. What's interesting about this, because all the terms are simply given in terms of the deterministic limit, is that this process s infinity is simply a Gaussian process, and the covariance function is given simply by the quadratic variation of the martingale terms, somehow, and a certain so we also uh, expected that perhaps this type of results can be used in order to estimate the parameters of the free frequency process using the deterministic limit. But anyway, with these two types of results, we also have the convergence to this deterministic limit, and we have uh, a way of measuring how much we deviate from the deterministic limit when using our frequency process. Okay, so now that we have this construction, what we want to see is, well, study our original uh, model for these populations in two islands with two different types using the deterministic limit to, to see if we can have some insight about the dynamics of the population. And the way that we decided to study uh, this model is by means by a stability analysis of the different equilibria in the model. So basically, um, we always have two trivial equilibria, which are the 0 0.00 and the 0.11, associated to fixation. So the point zero zero is representing the fixation of type Y individuals in the population, what the equilibrium one one is representing the fixation of type X individuals in the population. So uh, what we did is make an stability result trying to uh, study the stability of each of the different equilibria in the model. But what we were really interested in is in the case that the equilibria associated to fixation, the corners, are unstable. And the cases where a new equilibrium appears in the population. And this equilibrium, because will be different from 0, 0, and 1, 1, will, will be representative coexistent between the different types in the population, and therefore some kind uh, of instance of balance in selection. So um, we have several results uh, about the stability of the different equilibrium in the population. But let me exem exemplify these uh, results by means of this quite simple example. So let me consider that I will fix all the different parameters in the model, and I will start changing the values of this parameter, which, for example, if we understand the islands as one type uh, one, the island number one will be uh, active individuals, and the island number two will be dormant individuals, uh, I will start varying the rate at which um, active individuals are producing dormant individuals of type X. And I fix all the other rates in the model and I make some technical assumptions, for example, that this rate is different from zero. And this condition right here, which is with loud, we can change this condition and the model is, the result will be exactly the same. So we start considering the case in which this rate is equal to zero. So the rate at which active type X individuals produce dormant will be zero. So we expect somehow 
that equilibrium zero zero, which is related to fixation of type Y individuals will be stable. So because these two conditions are satisfied, the equilibrium zero zero is, is stable. But what happens if we start increasing this parameter right here? So when the parameter is quite large, so the rate at which active are producing dormant type X individuals, then we expect that after some value, the equilibrium zero zero will become unstable. And indeed, this is the case. So we start increasing the values of this radar here until it surpasses this threshold, which I denote simply by bar A, then the equilibrium zero zero becomes unstable. And what happens with the other equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium one one? Well, if we make this computation, we take this limit when uh, this rate, uh, parameter goes to zero, then we have the, this quantity right here is negative. And this by our stability analysis implies that the equilibrium one one will be unstable. And this will happen or occur for small values of this rate right here. But as we start increasing the value of this rate, producing more um, dormant X type individuals from the active ones, we expect that when it's quite large, then the equilibrium one one will become stable. And indeed, this is the case. When this parameter is bigger than this threshold, which I denote simply by bar B, then the point one one becomes stable given that these two conditions hold. So in order to resume what's happening, then we have under this condition, which can be changed without loss of generality, we have that on the interval zero and this parameter bar A, we have that the equilibrium zero zero is stable, but the equilibrium one one is unstable. So we can relate this interval as fixation of type Y individuals. On the other hand, between bar A and bar B, the critical point zero, zero, and one, one will be unstable. And finally, in the parameter given by bar B infinity, then the equilibrium uh, zero, zero will be stable and one, one unstable and one, one will be stable. So we can associate this interval to fixation of type X individuals. But the interesting thing is what happens in this middle interval right here. So one can show that this interval right here, because these conditions hold, then we have the appearance of a new equilibrium in the model, which lies in this set. So basically it's a new equilibrium, which is not associated to fixation of any of their two types. And given that this, in this interval, the equilibria zero, zero and one, one are unstable, then we can associate this choice of parameter, which is all this interval right here, to coexistence of the two types in the population, type X and type Y individuals, and therefore the appearance of an instance of balance in selection. So basically we, in this really simple model, what we have obtained is a complete interval for the choice of this parameter while fixing the other ones in which we have the appearance of this new equilibrium, we can be associated to coexistence and therefore an instance of balance in selection. And finally, let me speak about another quite simple example. Um, so what we wanted also to do is trying to compare two types of populations. So we'll consider that type X individuals will sustain a seed bank while type Y individuals do not. Therefore, because type Y individuals do not sustain a seed bank, then we can assume that all the rates associated to the seed bank in type Y individuals will be equal to zero. And because we're considering that it's a seed bank, for type X individuals, we'll consider that the rate, because the seeds do not produce seeds, only seeds produce active individuals. We will assuming that the, that the production of seeds of type X individuals by seeds, is simply giving as minus the production of active individuals from seeds from type X individuals. So under these um, assumptions right here, well, this, the model becomes quite simple. So our deterministic limit becomes a solution to this differential equation. And additionally, because type Y individuals do not sustain a seed bank, then the frequency of type X individuals in the seed bank will be equal to one for any T, which is positive. So this simplifies the model even more. And then we can actually explicitly solve the, this differential equation and obtain that the solution is given by this logistic equation where the parameters are given in terms of this rate, the, the cross rate of branching, the difference of the Malthusians and this quantity right here. But the interesting thing is that, of course, if we, if we consider that the total rate at which active type X individual is produced is bigger, 
than the total rate at which active individuals of type Y are produced, then of course type X individuals will have a selective advantage. So we compute the limit, of course the frequency uh, converges to one, meaning eventual fixation of type X individuals. But on the other hand, if we assume that the total rate at which active type X individuals is produced is less than the rate at which active type Y individuals is produced, even though we expect that type Y individuals will have a selected advantage, if we compute the limit, we obtain this, lim uh, this number between zero and one. So basically what we're obtaining when the population, uh, when the time is quite large is coexistence of the two types in the population. So in this quite simple model, because we're assuming a lot of things, especially that we have really large sized populations, is that the best thing that can happen for type X individuals is fixation in the population. And the worst thing that can happen is coexistence with type Y individuals. But from the perspective of type Y individuals, the best thing that can happen is to exist with type X individuals. And the worst thing that can happen is extinction. So basically with this really simple model, we're obtaining the, exist, the appearance, once again, of an instance of balancing selection. But additionally, although this model is quite simple, we can somehow conclude that perhaps this is one of the reasons why this seed production mechanism appear in nature, because apparently it gives some selective advantage to type X individuals. So in order to finish, I would just want to, uh, to show some numerical results. So here I have some results for the deterministic uh, limiting uh, system. So here, for example, we have two instances of balancing selection. So the equilibria associated to coexistence will be stable. So here we have different uh, solutions starting from different initial conditions which are converging to this equilibrium. And also we have examples, of course, for certain choice of parameters and we have fixation of type X individuals and we have fixation of type zero individuals and both equilibria are, are stable. And also uh, from the stochastic system. So in the stochastic system, as we can see, when the size of the population is quite small, then we have that the, sto the stochastic fluctuations are quite large, which are taking us out from the limiting deterministic system. But as the size of the population be becomes smaller and smaller, we can see that it becomes closer to the deterministic limit. And therefore, in these cases where the equilibrium associated to coexistence is stable, we see that eventually even the stochastic system becomes close to this equilibria and therefore also uh, favoring coexistence of the two different types in the population. And well, with this, I finish the talk. Thank you very much for your attention.